Hi this is Anaka Mudkal welcome back to the channel in this episode we will explore z depth maps and how to generate these depth maps in davinci resolve color page when creating a 3d scene for rendering cg images each object is assigned specific color material and lighting properties the scene also includes information about how objects are positioned and relate to each other in the final rendered image Each pixel corresponds to a point on the object in the scene. We can extract this spatial information using Z depth maps for compositing. So first, let's understand what Z depth map is. Z depth map, also known as depth map, is a grayscale image used in compositing and animation to represent the spatial distance of object from the camera in a 3D scene. Each pixel in this grayscale image shows how far objects are from the camera. This depth data allows us to integrate effects like atmospheric haze or automated occlusion. They are valuable for post-production tasks like color correction and depth of field effects like selectively applying a blur or defocus effect based on the element's position in the depth map. The Z depth maps can be generated using two stereo images. They can also be created from 3D models or photogrammetry. Modern mobiles use a form of Z depth to create bokeh effect in portrait and selfie mode. DaVinci Resolve 2 uses the same technique. In Z depth image, generally, lighter values indicate closer objects and darker values shows those farther away from the camera. However, there is no industry standard for data format for depth information. One rendering software package might define zero black to be infinity and the values get brighter as the surface gets closer to the camera another may be just the opposite where brighter is further from the camera so let's construct a z depth pass in the 3d software blender and see how it works in fusion so here we are in blender and we have set up a basic scene with 3d objects a cube two spheres and a monkey let's press render to render the scene And over here in the compositor we can see the depth map in the background. We have rendered the depth map as well as the color map. Now let's head over to the Resolve Fusion and composite the scene to create a depth of field. So select the clip and head over to the Fusion tab. Since we rendered our clip as an open EXR multilayer which allows us to save multiple image data in a single file, we have to enable the depth pass. Now select median 1 Then in the inspector select channels. If we scroll down we can see that this clip has the option to use depth channel. Let's activate it by clicking on none and selecting the depth pass. Now let's just brighten our image a touch. Let's add a color corrector and I'll raise the gamma values to 2.2. Next we will add depth blur. To do so, right click in the notes editor, go to add tool, navigate to deep pixel and select depth blur let's connect the depth blur to the composition over here are the depth blur controls now i'll increase the blur size quite a lot so that it becomes obvious how the z depth works next let's change the z scale from 200 to 0.1 now we can see the blur has been applied now let's focus on an object click and drag the sample over onto the view window And as we hover over various places on the cube, we can see them coming to focus. So Z depth pass is active and working. Another way we can check is by looking at the information the sample picker provides. Here we can see a Z value that keeps on changing. It's calculating the depth information stored in each pixel, and we can very quickly change the focal point in the scene. We select the monkey, and then the red ball, and so on. Here's what the depth pass looks like. Let's duplicate the median one and in the controls replace RGBA with depth passes. And when we load it in the scene, we can see our depth pass clearly. We can also manipulate the depth pass by using a brightness contrast node. Now let's come to DaVinci Resolve color page. Depth maps in DaVinci Resolve offer powerful ways to isolate and manipulate different depth regions in your footage. opening up a world of creative possibilities it generates an alpha channel or a mask based on the object's distance from the camera here we are in davinci resolve and i have already loaded the clip 
So let's shift to the color page. And this is a highly compressed stock footage. We will be focusing only on the depth map fusion effect. Let's shift the display to full screen viewer. We will use the depth map to mask out and blur the foreground and the background, keeping the focus on the yellow bus, creating a sort of tilt shift blur effect. So in the first node, let's add the depth map. And first, let's go over these parameters. The black levels represents the object farther away from the camera and the white levels represent objects closer to the camera. Now, quality. Depth maps use a lot of processing power and can be pretty demanding on your computer. So we will switch this to faster for now to make quicker adjustments and then later change it back to better once we are done with the adjustments, which will give us a higher quality result. Depth map preview will preview the mask that is being generated. Invert will invert the map's transparency values. Now let's come to the resulting map adjustment. Before I explain these parameters, let me explain through a different example. Here I've used the effect as a mat. By default, resulting map adjustment is disabled, which allows us to use the DaVinci Resolve's grading tools like color wheels, curves, etc. to adjust the full range of the depth map. Okay, coming back. When this is enabled, it lets us adjust the map's levels. Far limit adjusts the black levels of the depth map, these objects that are the farthest from the camera. Near limit adjusts the white levels, which are closer to the camera. Gamma lets you brighten or dim the middle depth values. Let me explain what gamma is. Gamma adjusts contrast without affecting the highlights and the shadows. It's a powerful tool to fine-tune the image's appearance. Okay, coming back. Now let's talk about isolating specific depth regions. Target depth allows you to choose and focus on specific range of depth values within your image or scene. Tolerance sets how wide the range around the target depth will be. Softness applies a gradual transition to the depth values within the selected range. Now we can refine the depth map using the map finesse tools. Post filter helps to smooth out the depth map so that any subsequent adjustments or effects applied to the image will blend seamlessly and look more natural. Since this is a highly compressed footage, you can see these bandings and other artifacts. Now, contract and expand adjust the edges of the map. It is useful for fine tuning the boundary between the affected and unaffected areas and blur softens the boundary for a smoother blend. Now let's check blanking region. These deals with blanking issues. So when you work with video footage that has different aspect ratio or resolution from your project settings, black bars often referred to as letterboxing or pillar boxing can appear. They blank out or cover the areas of the frame where there is no footage. These drop down options deal with how blanking issues will be handled. Let me demonstrate through a different example. We will use this clip, which as you can see, due to the difference in aspect ratio, we have these black bars. Now, let's add the depth map to this node and I'll change this to faster. So at default, it's set at automatic, which means that it is automatically excluding the black bars. Let's change it to process entire frame and now we can see the depth map is also extending to process the entire frame. Keeping it at automatic plus extra crop will allow us to use the cropping features while staying consistent with our media framing. And manual lets you override and set it however you want. Okay, coming back. Now I'll set these parameters according to the clip. I'll speed this up. Now let's add another node and I'll be using the lens blur. You can choose the designated tilt shift blur effect, but I'll be using the lens blur. And I'll just reduce the blur size slightly and connect the blue output of the first node to the blue input of the lens blur node, which is going to copy our depth map mask. Now let's get back to the previous node and I'll disable the depth map preview and enable invert. And let's also change the quality to better. And let's preview. Yep, 
Yeah. And you can further refine your mask or keyframe the setting to get an even more accurate mask. But we will end this here for now. Now let's quickly check another example. This is also a compressed stock footage. In this clip, we'll use the depth mask to mask out the man and blur the background slightly. Let's get started. We'll do the same procedure. Let's use the depth map. And I'll set these parameters. And then add a new node. And let me go back to the previous node and I'll disable the depth map preview. Now let's add the lens blur to the new node. Let's connect the alpha output. I'll go back to the depth map node and hit invert. Now I'll exaggerate the blur levels just for demonstration purpose. And that's it. To get a proper depth map, you need the parallax. But since this is a single image, there is no parallax. So you need to use it just slightly, just enough to get that depth of field effect, as you can see in these examples. This is just one of the ways of working with depth maps in DaVinci Resolve color page. But please don't forget to watch the next episode in which we will dive deep into compositing this 3D scene in Fusion using deep pixels. So that's all for this episode. For now, bye, take care and see you next time.